Hello everyone, we are going to do a practice problem to figure out the optimal product mix for a company that has constraints to their capacity. Companies get constrained in capacity because they only have so much of certain resources available. It could be the number of laborers that they have, it could be the actual physical space that they have to make products. In the case of Sentley Corporation, which we're going to do right here, they are constrained by their machine hours. They only have so many machines that they can run during the period. There's only so many hours in the day. They might be able to make even more and more product and, and sell it possibly uh, above the maximum amount they can make, but they can only go with the amount of capacity they have available. And this makes not just how much profit margin you get off of any one given unit important, it makes also how long it takes to produce that unit. You could have a unit that has a huge per unit uh, contribution margin, profit margin, but if it takes a super long time to make, you might be better off making a massive amount of units with a smaller per unit margin, but you can make a more total margin because you can produce so many more units because they're so much more time efficient to make. For Sentley Corporation here, they have three different types of fragrant oil diffusers. They have the standard model, the deluxe model, and the Watchman model, which is basically just the deluxe model with a nightlight and a digital clock included. We have the following information to work with. One thing that all companies are constrained by, if you think about it, is customer demand. You might have a product that is your most profitable product. So why don't companies just make one product if it's their most profitable? Because there's only so many customers willing to buy that product. So you never want to make units above customer demand. Their demand in this case for the standard diffuser is 50,000. Making the 50,000 and first diffuser serves no purpose because they're not going to be able to sell it. It hypothetically has a contribution margin, but they will never actually realize it because they can't generate that sales revenue because no one wants to buy that 50,000 and first standard diffuser. So for demand, we are constrained by the fact that People are only willing to buy 50,000 standard diffusers, 36,000 deluxe diffusers, and 18,000 Watchman diffusers. We're also constrained, as I said before, by our machine hours. We only have 60,000 machine hours to work with. So we got to factor in not just how much profit we're going to make off of each model, uh, each unit of each model, but also how long it takes to produce. And the standard takes a half of an hour. The deluxe model takes 0.6 repeating hours, or if you will, 40 minutes, two thirds of an hour. Uh, and the Watchman makes 0.83 repeating, it takes 0.83 repeating hours to produce, or five sixths of an hour, or 50 minutes, if you will. Uh, I have the crazy decimals in here just to make this easier to use in Excel, uh, but you might see this as 50 minutes. Make sure you convert everything to one uniform system of measurement hours, in this case, which I've done for you. So, Hypothetically here, the Watchman might be our most profitable unit in terms of how much margin it makes for each one that we sell. But it also takes significantly longer, like 20 minutes longer, to make than the standard. So there might be a point where the margin for each successive Watchman that we sell uh, isn't enough to make up for the fact that we can make way less of them because they take longer to produce. First step in figuring out what our optimal product mix is, given how well we're constrained by machine hours and we're constrained by customer demand, is to start by finding our contribution margin per unit. It is given right here that the sales price of the standard is 25 bucks and it costs $16 in variable cost to produce. So its contribution margin is just sales revenue per unit minus variable cost per unit, 25 minus 16 means that each standard diffuser that Sentley Corporation sells has a $9 contribution margin. For the Deluxe, a $35 sales price less $24 in variable manufacturing costs means that each Deluxe diffuser that we sell has a margin of $11. And lastly, for the Watchmen, our biggest, fanciest, and therefore most expensive model, they sell for $50 a pop. Each one of them has a variable cost of, to produce each unit of $34.50. Therefore, each Watchman diffuser has a $15.50 contribution margin. So again, the Watchman, as we see right here, is the most profitable, but it also takes the longest to produce. So we can't just go with, let's make the most profitable unit as many as we possibly can. We need to figure this out, not just in terms of contribution margin per unit, but contribution margin per unit of the constraint. We maximize our 60,000 available machine hours by figuring out how much each one of these units 
is going to provide to our overall contribution margin for each machine hour that we spend producing them. So we're going to start with our hours required to produce one unit. And this information is given in the problem, so I can just bring it down. The standard diffuser takes a half an hour. The deluxe diffuser takes two thirds of an hour, if you will, 0.6666. And the Watchman diffuser takes five sixths of an hour or 0.83333 to produce. So let's turn that around. Let's convert that instead of being how many hours to produce one unit and, and flip it and say, how many units can we produce for each hour that we run in machines? And we're gonna do that by taking one divided by the hours to produce one unit. And that will convert it to how many we can make per hour. So if I take one and divide it by 0.5, I get two, which makes sense. If it takes half an hour to produce a standard diffuser, we should be able to make two diffusers per hour. If I take one and divide it by this huge decimal over here, I get one and a half. So we can make one and a half deluxe diffusers every hour we run our machines, or we could complete one and have another one halfway done when the hour ends. And then for the Watchman, one divided by the 0.83333 hours it takes to produce each Watchman tells us that we can make 1.2 Watchman diffusers per hour. Well, let's bring down our contribution margin per unit. We have this information up above. It is nine for the standard, 11 for the deluxe, and 15.50 for the Watchman. I'm gonna just drag that in with a fill handle and not try to merge a cell, sorry about that. There we go. And now, if I take the margin that we get per unit and multiply it by the number of units we can produce per hour, I get our contribution margin per unit of our constraint per machine hour. So, put that in here so you have it for reference. That is just contribution margin per unit times units produced per hour. And for us, if we make two diffusers, standard diffusers per hour, and each one has a $9 contribution margin. That means that running our machines for an hour to produce those two diffusers is going to have a total contribution margin of $18 that we get from production for that hour. For deluxe, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna multiply the one and a half diffusers, deluxe diffusers that we can make per hour by the $11 uh, per unit contribution margin we have. And I determined that running our machines for an hour to make deluxe diffusers is going to increase our overall contribution margin by $16.50. And then for the Watchman, if we can make 1.2 of those per hour, and each one of those has a contribution margin of $15.50, that means that running our machines for an hour to make Watchman diffusers is going to increase our overall contribution margin by $18.60. You maximize your overall profitability by maximizing your contribution margin per unit of the constraint, which means whatever model has the highest contribution margin per unit of the constraint is the one you should focus production on first. And for us, that's the Watchman. Uh, just to keep things clear here, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna color code these stop sign style. That's the best one, so let's make that green. Standard is the second highest contribution margin per unit of our constraint. Let's make that yellow. And then the deluxe is the one with the lowest contribution margin per unit of constraint. It's still profitable, so we'd still be willing to make it, but we wouldn't be willing to make it uh, if it cut into production of either the Watchman or the standard model. So now that we have them ranked, we know that we're going to make as many Watchmen as customer demand warrants first. Then we're gonna move on to the standard, and if we have any left, we'll make some deluxe. Now that we have them ranked, let's figure out how many machine hours we're going to have to commit to each one of these products to meet that customer demand. So our contribution margin per machine hour, we just calculated up above. I'm just gonna bring this on down. That was 18 for the standard, 1650 for the deluxe, and if I can get that thing out of the way, 1860 for the Watchman. Well, how many machine hours would we have to use to meet, to meet our customer demand for each particular product? Well, the Watchman, our demand is 18,000. That's how many of those that people are willing to buy. And we can make 1.2 of those per hour. So in the machine hours used section, what I'm going to do, the formula in first, 
is I'm going to take customer demand and I'm going to divide it by diffusers or units, if you will, produced, produced per hour. And that's going to tell me how many hours it's going to take to make the amount that demand warrants. So 18,000 divided by 1.2 means it's going to take 15,000 hours to make the 18,000 watchmen that we think people are going to be willing to buy. And there's no point in making any more than that because there's not demand for that uh, 18,000 in first watchmen. So we, we know this is the most profitable one. That's why we went first. And we're going to assign a portion of our 60,000 available machine hours to that equal to the amount of time it's going to take to make the maximum amount of units that demand warrants. But now we're tapped out on the watchmen. So where would I go next? Well, the standard is the second most profitable one. So if I go to the standard diffuser over here, I see that our customer demand is 50,000 units. How many of those can we make per hour? Because we should divide by that. And we see right here that we can make two of those per hour. So if we need to make 50,000 standard diffusers in each one, and we can make two of them per hour, it'll take a total of 25,000 hours to produce those standard units. We don't want to make another one past that because again we'll be exceeding customer demand and it's unlikely that anybody will buy it. Right now we've committed 40,000 hours, 15,000 plus 25,000 to these two models. We still have remaining capacity. While the Deluxe was the worst, it is still profitable. It still has a positive contribution margin, which means since we have unused capacity, we might as well use it up to make deluxe models. So what happens if I go and I take the 36,000 deluxe units that are demanded and divide it by the one and a half diffusers that we can produce per hour for the deluxe model? I come up with 24,000. But that's a problem because if we add these three numbers together, I'll throw it in over here. If we take the sum of 25,000, 24,000, and 15,000, we get 64,000. So to make all of those units that demand warrants, it would take 64,000 machine hours. Well, we don't have 64,000 machine hours. We have 60,000 machine hours, which means we can't make as many deluxe units as demand warrants. We're gonna exceed our total overall capacity. So what do we do in this case? Well, the watchman got 15,000 and it's maxing out demand. The standard got 25,000, also maxing out demand. After that, we have 20,000 left. Uh, and since that's all we have left, we'd like to make you know, the full amount of deluxe ones that we could, uh, but we can't. We don't have enough machine time. We don't have the capability to produce that amount of deluxe diffusers to meet customer demand. And since it's the least profitable, it's the product model that we are going to skimp on. And now I have spread out my 60,000 machine hours in the most efficient way, taking into consideration how much profitability running the machines for an hour uh, for each model contributes to our company, as well as how many of each unit we're going to be actually capable of selling. So that is our optimal product mix. What's it going to do to our total capacity or our total contribution margin? Well, total contribution margin at full capacity is just contribution margin per machine hour times hours used. Contribution margin per unit of your constraint times the quantity of the constraint being consumed for that particular product. So if we are making $18 per hour making standard diffusers and we're going to commit 25,000 machine hours to the production of that model during the period, that means that standard diffusers produced and sold during this upcoming period for Sentley Corporation are going to contribute $450,000 to our company's overall margin. For the deluxe model, If we are making $16.50 in margin for each hour that we run machines that produce deluxe diffusers and we have allocated 20 machine hours to the production of that model, then the deluxe diffuser is going to contribute $330,000 to our overall margin. And the same thing for the Watchman, 1860 times 15,000 comes up with 279,000. And if I sum that up, find out that Sentley Corporation's total contribution margin from utilizing the entire 60,000 machine hours of capacity they have and taking into consideration customer demand 
the total margin is going to be one million and fifty nine thousand and you're more than welcome to try out different numbers and put them in there you will not find a contribution margin that is higher uh, without exceeding overall production capacity or exceeding customer demand for any one given model that is in fact Sentley Corporation's optimal product mix for their three different styles of diffusers